congested skin, I was having blackheads, I was having whiteheads, I was having cystic acne, I was having all types of acne. Hi guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I'm Heather and today I'm gonna go over my skincare routine. I was on the pill since I was like 16. Acne was non-existent, I didn't have any pores, I didn't have any oil, I didn't have any dry patches. Everything was perfectly fine. I rarely even wore any face products at all just because of how clear my skin was. And now I'm looking back and I am such an ungrateful little bitch. When I switched to the IUD in 2019, I noticed a huge difference in my skin. I noticed that I was having congested skin. I was having blackheads. I was having whiteheads. I was having cystic acne. I was having all types of acne and it was all located around my jaw and my mouth area. It may not look bad to you, but I would wake up and have a new whitehead or a new cystic pimple every single day and that went on for months. I had no clue what was going on with my skin and it was really really sad. I remember there were times where I would actually cry because I hated how my skin looked. Honestly acne goes away at the end of the day and now I'm doing better and I've found products that work for me. I will insert pictures of what my skin looked like. It was super congested. It was covered in blackheads. Whenever I would run my finger down the side of my face, all I would feel is little bumps. I was initially super oily to the point where my makeup would separate on my face. And now it's back to being more normal combination. Also, can you guys tell I got a new camera? So it's a lot better quality before I was filming on my phone. And now I have this lovely little camera. So if you notice me looking at the side, then I'm really sorry, but the viewfinder is like literally right here. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I guess I will get into my more morning routine now. I don't really use a lot in the morning. When I had super oily skin, I had to use a cleanser. My skin has actually gotten a lot more normal slash combination. So most mornings, I actually don't use a cleanser at all. If I do work out in the morning, then I will cleanse my face with a cleanser. The cleanser that I use is the Cerave Foaming Cleanser, which is just right here. It's super basic. It's super easy to find. Well, I don't know if it's easy to find anymore because Hiram has completely brainwashed the entire earth to love this, which for good reason. It's just really gentle. It's basic, it's cheap, and it works. So I don't really see a point in buying a super expensive cleanser when it's on your skin for like 30 seconds. I like this because it doesn't make my skin feel like tight or dry after. It just feels clean. After that, I'll dry off my face and then I go in with Alpha Arbutin by The Ordinary. This probably lasts me a few months. This is really, really good for scarring. So when I had a bunch of those whiteheads, bumps, and cystic acne, I had an obsession with picking my skin and popping my acne, which I know is horrible and causes more trauma to the skin and more scarring. So I now am dealing with the scarring at the end of all that acne. And it also includes hyaluronic acid, I believe, and that really helps moisturize the skin. It's supposed to help reduce the look of hyperpigmentation in spots, which I think is working pretty well for me. I think this is my second bottle and I'm about to have to buy my third. It goes on super thin and you don't feel anything really. And after that, I go in with moisturizer. I had been previously using this Abib hydration gel water tube when my skin was more oily and I wanted something super light that I could wear under makeup. It says it's a gel, but I feel like it's more of a gel cream. It's not like super watery. It has really aesthetic packaging as you can see. As my skin got drier, I don't know if it had been moisturizing it enough. So that's why I have now switched over to the Cerave Moisturizing Cream for normal to dry skin. And it includes ceramides and hyaluronic acid. And it comes in this giant bottle. It's a super basic moisturizer and it does its job. It seals everything in it keeps your skin moist. This is a lot thinner, more gel-like consistency. And this is definitely more of a cream. It's new to my routine. And the ceramides are supposed to help lock in the moisture for your skin and the hyaluronic acid obviously helps with moisturizing as well or keeping your skin hydrated. Last in my routine is sunscreen and I used to be really, really bad about wearing sunscreen. I get extremely freckly across my face here. Obviously when you have hyperpigmentation and scarring, if you let your spots be exposed to the sun without protection, it'll only darken and make your spots even more hyperpigmented. Sun damage causes wrinkles and I read somewhere that most wrinkles actually come from the sun and not genetics. I have two sunscreens that I typically use the Biore UV that everyone talks about. It's a super lightweight 
gel water consistency. But the only thing I have an issue with is it just smells like straight alcohol. It works really well if you have oily skin, it just glides on, it feels like nothing, it feels like water. The second sunscreen that I use is the Dear Claire's Soft Airy UV Essence Everyday Sun Protector. And it says it's a soft, weightless, invisible daily sunscreen that guards against UVA, UVB without leaving greasiness or white finish. And I just got this on Yes Style, I believe, and it wasn't too much. And it comes with 80 milliliters and it's water-based as well. It's a little bit thicker than the Biore one. Growing up, the biggest reason why I never used sunscreen was because I really hated the feeling of it. I hated how greasy it was. It just grossed me out as a child. I know I should apply more often than I do and I want to try looking for like a spray on sunscreen because if you are wearing makeup it's kind of hard to like put sunscreen on your face afterwards that is actually all for my morning routine I don't know if that's like a lot of product or really little I guess it completely depends on what you do and who you are and how many products you use oh I actually forgot one thing, azelic acid. I completely forgot about this. I heard this was supposed to help with acne. So I do use this in the morning right after I use the alpha or butin. I just put it on top. It's a really thick consistency and it may take you a little while to get used to. Well, I'm from Canada, so you actually can't get the ordinary azelic acid here. I've been using it in the mornings. I kind of stopped for a little bit. So that's probably why I just forgot about it now. As you can see, a lot of the products I use are either to prevent scarring or minimize scarring or hyperpigmentation. I also started drinking a lot more water. My skin becomes more plump, so it's not as dehydrated and I can tell that it's glowing a little bit more. So now I'm gonna get into my night routine and includes a few more products, different treatments that I do use. And these treatments I don't use every single night or all together. Usually I only do treatments maybe once or twice a week. That's because I'm lazy and I forget. If I am wearing makeup, the first product I use is the Clinique Take the Day Off Balm and kind of massage it between my hands and then apply it to my face. The heat from your hands will melt the product so it'll kind of go into an oil and then that really breaks down your makeup. I like to double cleanse because obviously when you only cleanse your face once, not all your makeup comes off. Even sometimes when you double cleanse, not all your makeup comes off. When I double cleanse, I use the Surave SA Cleanser and because it has salicylic acid inside, it helps with gentle exfoliation. I was using it morning and night and I noticed my skin was drying out a lot. I've noticed that this is pretty good and it helps with my acne. Sometimes if you go into the pharmacy, they have a specific section for medicated acne treatments. Sometimes this cleanser can be found in the pharmacy section. I then directly go in with my niacinamide. It's supposed to reduce the appearance of skin blemishes and congestion. And it has helped when I was waking up with a new blackhead every single day or a new whitehead every single day. A new product that I recently introduced was the Cause RX Advanced Snail 96 Mucin. It's super slimy when you pump it out. It literally feels like a slug. It's supposed to help keep the skin moist and make it look very smooth and healthy, which I completely agree with. When I wake up in the morning, my skin is very plump and youthful. I use the Surave Moisturizing Cream again. And then lastly, I use Rosehip Oil. If your skin is dehydrated or dry, sometimes it will overproduce oil. I just put three or four drops on my hands and kind of massage it in between and then pat it on top of the moisturizer. This makes my skin so soft. I actually recommended it to one of my friends and he was like, yeah, my skin feels so soft when I wake up in the morning, but it also promotes skin regeneration and can improve the skin flexibility and permeability. And it also helps with scarring. So that is the end of my nighttime routine. Why am I congested? And now I'm gonna go into treatments and products that I don't use every day. The first product I'm gonna talk about is the BHA Blackhead Power Liquid from Cause RX, and it's supposed to help remove blackheads and to control excess sebum while moisturizing the skin. I don't see a huge significant difference in my blackheads after using this, but what I really like about this is the next day, my skin is so glowy and youthful and it looks just so smooth. Highly, highly recommend this, and it's super gentle. If your skin can handle it, then I would recommend the Ordinary Age BHA 30% and BHA 2% peeling solution. It is this iconic bottle with the red liquid that you see everywhere. I like to use this when my skin is experiencing a lot of scarring or hyperpigmentation. It does definitely help lighten those areas and it really brightens the face. If you have sensitive skin though, I'd probably stay away from this. It does sting quite a bit. You only need a really thin layer on your skin. This helps exfoliate the skin's topmost surface for a brighter and more even appearance. This is an Origins Rose Clay Mask and my friend recommended it to me. It's super, super gentle if you are looking for a clay mask that does everything but also isn't super abrasive. It does
does have exfoliating beads inside. You can actually massage your face and it gives a light exfoliation. Just something for when my skin is feeling more oily and I need to control the oil. I stole this from my mom. I saw this in the bathroom and I wanted to try it and it's the Clarins SOS Hydra Mask. It's a gel cream texture. I actually just apply a thin layer to my entire face after I come out of the shower. I'll let that soak into my skin and then after that I will take a toner and kind of remove any excess and apply the rest of my regular nighttime routine products. It does really hydrate my skin and make it feel plump. Another product that I use when my skin is feeling super dry is the Origins Drink Up Intensive Overnight Hydrating Mask with Avocado and Glacier Water. If I am noticing that my skin is looking a little bit dehydrated or just feeling a little bit dry because I haven't drank enough water or the seasons changing, I will use this in place of my moisturizer for the night. And I still will apply a rosehip oil on top of this. Lastly, when I had really, really bad acne, like I talked about, I keep saying really, really bad. It wasn't horrible. It was just uncomfortable for me because I had never experienced it. I still get acne sometimes, but when I get spots, sometimes I will go and use a clean and clear Persa gel. It has 5% benzoyl peroxide, so it's an acne treatment. I don't know how well this works. I kind of bought it because I was desperate and wanted to use something on my acne. Some spots it worked on, some spots it didn't, some spots it did absolutely nothing, I'm pretty sure. What I recommend instead of buying that clean and clear product would be blister patches. I don't wanna spend like $30 on a sticker. So what me and my sister both do is we buy a box of blister patches that typically go on the heel of your foot and we just cut them. And I've just cut little pieces depending on the size of my acne. And I've noticed when I do use this, it really drains out all the liquid from my acne. It's more for acne that has come to a head and I found it super super effective it prevents me from picking my skin I would also make sure that you cut it a little bit bigger than your pimple because of how it's raised most of the time you want to make sure it's really sealed in there and that it can draw out that moisture that is the end of all my products I hope you guys found some of these products and tips helpful if you guys like this video make sure you like comment and subscribe but thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys another time <laughs>